Good morning. Going to read today the Song of Solomon. And uh, I just kind of looked at the notes of uh, uh, my good friend uh, Matthew Henry here. And uh, and uh, which gave some clarity for this very mysterious but very beautiful book. And uh, let's read into it and, uh, and see what this thing says. And this version of the Bible is the Living Bible Paraphrase. So there are some differences from uh, the original words of the King James, but uh, it, 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 uh, it speaks to the modern man uh, a little better than uh, uh, takes away a lot of the, uh, the uh, hard thinking about what words mean. And then it leaves open doors for other things that are taken out. So it's a, it's a challenge either way, but I really have been enjoying reading this book of late. Uh, number one reads, The Song of Songs, more wonderful than any other, was composed by King Solomon. It is stating here that this, this uh, story <clears throat> is the Song of Songs. It's like a... It's like a really important and great story. And this is the story of God's love for those who love Him, uh, given in likeness. And this little girl here, she's saying, Kiss me again and again, for the, your love is sweeter than wine. How fragrant your cologne, and how great is your name. No wonder all the young girls love you. Uh, take me uh, with you. Come, let's run. Now, one thing I noticed that uh, Mo Matthew Henry here was saying that this uh, this story is so deep that an elephant could swim in it. And uh, meaning there are tons, it's loaded with tons and tons of deeper meanings. Um, that cologne refers to the way we feel when we're in communion with Jesus Christ. And uh, his name uh, is uh, so great as that name is the name of Jesus Christ, which this wedding, this communion is about to take place that Solomon is foreseeing here in his, in his prophetic state. Come uh, with, uh, let me take me with you and come let's run. This, she wants to be joined. She wants to join in this marriage, this, uh, this communion. Uh, the girl still speaking. The king has brought me into his palace. How happy uh, we will be. Your love is better than wine. No wonder all the young girls love you. Now, in this case, the other young girls are, uh, back at that time, the school of uh, religious thought was the Jewish girls, the people of uh, Israel. And you have to remember that all these other girls back in that time when Jesus hit the world, uh, they couldn't see Jesus for a long time, and they and they uh, rebuked him, as many of them still do today. Um, so uh, we have to keep in mind about these other young girls. Uh, the girl that God has chosen here, uh, the, that girl is the one who can see the truth of who Jesus is. The girl is speaking. She says, I am dark. The old uh, version uh, uses the term black. I am black but beautiful, O oh, girls of Jerusalem, tan like the dark tints of Kader. Uh, <clears throat> this blackness represents the sin. It represents the falling away. It represents undeservingness. It represents uh, everything that we are without Christ. We're guilty in our sins. We're, we are he carrying this heavy black burden, this dark, deep despair. Uh, no path for forgiveness. We can, you know, those other girls are all still waiting for their man to show their their dream night, their to come to save them, Un unbeknownst to uh, the other girls that this uh, wonderful uh, knight in shining armor has already, in fact, shown up. And his wonderful name that smells like perfume to our souls when we say it and read it is that of Jesus Christ. King Solomon talking here. But lovely as the silken tints of Solomon. He's saying uh, to this girl, Yeah, you're black. Uh, you've got this sin, but you're as lovely as the silken tints of Solomon. Why? Because through him, 
her skin, her color, her darkness, her heaviness is going to be lightened like someone who never had to toil in that field and get that suntan that her family uh, forces her to bear in those hot fields where that sun burns her. He's going to take all that away in his eyes. Through forgiveness, she's as lovely as the silken tents of Solomon. The girl says, don't look down on me, you city girls, just because my complexion is so dark. The sun has tanned me. My brothers were angry with me and sent me out into the sun to tend the vineyards. But see what it has done to me. Um, uh, saying here that the brothers, the family members who sent them out, they say, if we look at our brothers, uh, the, uh, the Jewish people today who don't accept Christ, they, uh, they tend to look down on people who believe in Jesus because they think Jesus was a trickster. They don't yet realize, many of these nice folks, that Jesus was the one and only true Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, but Jesus here, as he sees her with her, 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 her brightness, her color of the tents of uh, uh, the tents of Solomon, the silken tents of Solomon is how he sees her. It's because she's come to him. She's reached out to him. And um, the girl says here, tell me, O oh, one I love, where are you leading your flock today? Where is God leading his flock today? Where will you be at noon? And, um, uh, for I will come and join you there instead of wandering like a vagabond among the flocks of your companions. The wandering Jew, the Jew who has no nation, no home, no country until 1947 when they were finally granted that piece of ground, that nation that is known as Israel today and to this very day being threatened by the family, the brothers who send them out to work Still to this day, trying to keep that girl in dark skin, not a physical carnal skin we're talking about, but a dark metaphorical skin of being burnt by the sun from trials, toils and troubles and burdens because they have not the forgiveness of Jesus Christ as of yet. They have not the truth of Jesus Christ. She will be made white and light as the silken sheets of Solomon. Uh, King Solomon says, if you don't know, I, O oh, most beautiful woman in all the world, follow the trail of my flock to the shepherd's tent. This is Jesus Christ. If um, the other girls in the town who are representative of the uh, girls by uh, all these different faiths and religions that don't have Jesus Christ, <clears throat> follow those tents, follow those flocks, those Christians, follow those where everybody's going with the love of God that sends out the love of Jesus Christ and we pick it up with our antenna on the inside and it makes us feel good. Follow that and feed your sheep and their lambs. It's telling us here what's going to take place at some point. Every knee is going to bow. Every knee is going to bow to the Lord Jesus Christ because that door is opened only through him. What a lovely filly you are, my love. How lovely your cheeks are with your hair falling down upon them. How stately your neck with your long string of jewels. Uh, we shall make you golden earrings and silver beads. Uh, this is uh, Solomon here is uh, picking up on the vibe of that uh, uh, groom, that bridegroom who Jesus is. And it alludes to this many times in the New Testament about the ladies with the lamp. Some of them have oil. Some of them don't. There's a wedding about to take place. The Lord Jesus Christ is about to marry his bride. And uh, that is not a singular bride, but a multiple of souls that are going to join him in their belief and faith in him. And uh, he's saying here, she's going to be rewarded. We shall make you golden earrings and silver beads. These uh, 
You're going to be adorned with the Word of God. You're going to be blessed with the feeling that this thing gives you, this beautiful Word of God. Jesus says, Lo, I come in uh, the Word. Uh, He's going to bless you and give you these beautiful, ornate things, which is uh, the feelings and emotions that you get from seeking God's Word. The girl says, The king lies on his bed, enchanted by the fragrance of my perfume. What fragrance is that? When you look up to God, and when you pray to God, and when you confess that Jesus Christ paid that price on the cross, this is like perfume to God's nostrils. Just like uh, swine, those who eat the flesh of swine are like, uh, are like smoke to his nostrils. Why? What does swine swine represent? An unclean animal. Where did those spirits go when Jesus took them out of those those people that lived in the graveyards that were more comfortable in the place of death than they were in the place of life? He put them in the swine, who the swine ran into the rivers, representative of the many waters, the many peoples, the many souls that are in this, this plan of salvation are smoke in his nostrils. So when we look to God and we pray to Jesus and we accept Jesus Christ and that price paid on that cross, we are like a perfume, a beautiful scent to that king of whom we're about to marry. My beloved one is as sacket of mirth <clears throat> lying between my breast. Now, why between the breast? Because that's where the heart is. Just as uh, Jesus took uh, the twelve into his bosom, uh, the bosom or another word for breast. This is where your heart is. There's nothing as warm and as soft and as love as when you're hugging up to a wife or to your lover and, uh, and your face is close in between those breasts because it's the closest point to the heart. And we feel a spiritual connection with our face and the bosom of uh, someone we love as much as we do that physical connection. And so here, uh, he's talking about uh, being close, this acceptance, this this open armness. King Solomon, the king is talking here. My beloved is the banquet of flowers in the gardens of Indigida. Uh, How beautiful you are, my love. How beautiful. Your eyes are soft as doves. I think of that dove when Jesus was baptized, when that simple act of uh, likeness were going under the waters and being reborn out of those waters. And uh, here below, uh, behold, this Holy Spirit comes as this dove. And uh, that's how the Holy Spirit comes to all of us when we rise up out of those waters that we're submerged in, which uh, the muddy waters of the Jordan are dirty. But when we come out of those waters, we're as clean, as white as snow. This is all metaphorically. And how beautiful are you, my love? How beautiful your eyes are soft as doves. What a lovely, pleasant thing you are. Lying here upon the grass, beautiful green grass, shaded by the cedar trees and firs. Um, Why cedar trees and firs? Think about when God made that... uh, the uh, temple in the old days, in the old books, and he was describing exactly how he wanted this big building to be built. And it was these big, strong uh, timbers of firs and and cedars. Why? Because uh, these timbers, you could imagine them, that would be in the big uh, ceilings of this temple. They smelled like uh, like cedar does today, and, uh, like... Uh, uh, cypress trees, uh, a good quality tree has a beautiful perfumey smell. I can imagine how wonderful it was to walk in that building and smell the aroma of that wood that you know that wood would not rot like other woods. Uh, this house that I'm in, it's, it's wrapped in, in a cedar. Why? Because cedar is known, uh, excuse me, not cedar, but a cypress. Cypress and the like, uh, those like trees are known for their properties not to rot. They last long. They're outlasting other woods. If you cover the outside of your house in pine, and uh, once that paint breaks away or whatever means you're protecting it, that house is not going to last very long. 
And this is giving uh, the sense and the feeling that this love, that uh, this, this union between King and poor, dark, sin-filled girl, that he's going to adorn her and wipe her away with that forgiveness from that cross, is uh, that protection when she lies down in that green grass and that beautiful shaded area and that beautiful valley, all that is going to, that's like a likeness for our heaven. Um, and you can have your heaven on earth now. Uh, this book is uh, just as Matthew Henry uh, uh, said it would be. It's so deep that an elephant can swim in it. Uh, the more you think about these, uh, uh, the wordings that this book, and the more versions of this you read, this is the... Uh, Living Bible paraphrase, but uh, uh, also we should definitely read this in the, in the, the original 1611 versions as well as other uh, as other versions to get the. Uh, there's always different shades of uh, understanding that comes from all the hard work that all of these men did in their lives to help us gain understanding. We're all standing on the shoulders of our brothers before us. The whole Bible was written in that fashion. And it's only right that the understanding of our Bible uh, comes in the same way. We all stand on the shoulders of others, whether we want to know that or not. So with that being said, what a beautiful and powerful uh, a book this uh, Song of Solomon is uh, kicked off to be. And grandchildren, if you're looking at this video, I hope and pray that you guys are doing well. And I hope that you are being kind to each other. And uh, anybody else that stumbles across these videos in the future, if you've enjoyed uh, taking this little reading with me uh, uh, this morning, partaking of this beautiful manna, this Word of God, this uh, thing that makes us well and heals us and gives us good substance. If you've enjoyed this breakfast this morning, then stop on by and, and take another read uh, another time. Uh, uh, this, is a, this is a good thing that we should join together. Jesus told us one time that we would do uh, great things. And what greater thing is there in this, in this world of possibilities where we could uh, share some words of thought about the Word of God, goes through a menagerie of ones and zeros on the Internet, and can come out and reach another person or persons thousands of miles away. No airplane, no train, no, uh, no big travel, no sweat and tears uh, needed. Uh, just uh, you could say it, read it, share it, and bam, there it is. What a great and what wonderful potential that has. Of course, just as for great and wonderful potential, there's also the danger of being misled and confusion. And there's no better way to protect ourselves from that than by keeping in the Word of God at least a little every day. I like to open my days in the morning with the Word of God, and I like to shut them down at night when I go to sleep with my wife in that same fashion. Because uh, in this there is safety. In this there are those cedar and fir beams that we lie in the shade under that will never rot and never go away. Look us up. We're in the book. Grandchildren, I love you. And uh, we'll see you again someday. Uh, we'll all meet here in this book. In these, within these pages, there is et an eternal life. And uh, I hope you're working your way through these pages, uh, my beloved grandchildren. Uh, with that being said, I'm getting long-winded, so I'm going to let you get on with your daily activities and work, and I'm going to do the same thing. And everybody have a blessed and wonderful day.